the largest animal migration in the world. When I say this sentence, you probably think of wildebeest running across the vast Masai Mara plains or some bird flying across the globe in the winter. What if I told you that you're wrong? What if I told you that the biggest animal migration in the world is not seasonal, happens every day, twice a day, and that too underwater? I know you must have many questions like who does this migration, why twice a day, and as someone who doesn't live underwater, how does it affect me? Well, in this video, I'm going to answer all of these questions and more when we talk about the dial vertical migration. Hello everyone, I'm Sagar and welcome to this brand new episode. For people like me who love the natural world, migration is one of the most interesting topics there is. And it doesn't get any better than this underwater migration right here. As dial means daily, small animals like shrimp, fish, zooplankton swim from the depths of the ocean to the surface every day to feed. This happens after every dusk and what they are looking for are microscopic plants called phytoplankton. A fun fact about phytoplankton is that they are extremely, extremely necessary for life on Earth because they create 50% of the oxygen that we breathe today. And you might not even have heard of them before this video. After these animals are done feeding on the phytoplankton, they dive back down to the twilight zone. Not that one. They dive down to the twilight zone and they do this before the break of dawn. And I'll tell you in a while why that is important. If compared to humans, this to and fro journey is equal to running a 10k to get your food, running a 10k to go back to bed, and doing this at twice the speed of an Olympic marathon runner. Now we get that the motivation behind this migration is food, but why the dusk and dawn? Why the specific timing? All wild animals follow the agenda better unfed than dead. And if these guys travel in the day, Predators that hunt by sight, like tuna, swordfish, sharks, etc., will easily catch hold of them and kill them. But if they travel during the night, they're going to be able to avoid this large threat and live to do another dive. But even with these tricks up their sleeves, they're not completely safe. Tactile hunters like jellyfish are known to lie in wait with their tentacles spread, ready to entangle, ensnare, and engulf these vertical commuters. And this is the story of every ocean every night. If we talk about the sheer scale of this event, it is speculated to be the largest biomass movement in the world, comparable only to Yamama walking. Oh brother, this guy stinks! I have a childish brain. Let's turn the clock back a bit and find out how we stumbled upon this in the first place. Well, during World War II, I'm not making this up. During World War II, ships and submarines had sonar on them to sweep the ocean floor for enemy submarines. Now, during their sonar expeditions, they found out that certain areas of this ocean floor were shallower during the night than during the day. That's because what they thought was the ocean floor moving was actually a huge dense mass of small animals vertically migrating. Now, take a moment to wrap your head around how many of these animals you would need to think that the ocean floor is moving. Like, really pause this video and take a moment. Insane. Now, it's very human to think nice facts about this cool migration, but why should I care? And the simple answer to that question is that the world as we know it would not exist without this migration. The oceans are one of the biggest carbon sinks in the world, capturing 25% of the carbon dioxide that we produce. Now, dial vertical migration is probably one of the fastest ways to capture and sequester carbon from the atmosphere. Phytoplankton at the surface of the ocean create oxygen and store carbon dioxide. Now, these small animals come and eat the phytoplankton along with the carbon and dive down into the depths. Here they will poop or other animals will eat them and be turned into poop. And then this waste material along with the carbon will settle on the ocean floor where it will stay for millennia. Now this process right here is extremely necessary when it comes to the carbon cycle and maintaining balance on earth. And with that being said, that is all for this episode. If you found something interesting, if you learned something new, 
make sure to send this to a friend and i'll see you in the next episode